Hey guys, Ed Slow Car Fix. Uh, today I am working on my 64 Corvair, uh, the Seacan Coupe, the car that was in a Seacan since 1982. And uh, I'm making some good progress on it. I want to show you guys what's going on. Okay, so my floors are painted. That's cool. Um, car's a little lower right now because I'm still working on it. The engine and transmission. Uh, engine's been run. If you saw my other videos, the engine's been run. The uh, valves are set. Everything's set. Everything's good. I still haven't put out my video about the part two of the engine assembly. I will do that, um, but I've been busy working on it. Uh, so I'm getting ready to put this thing in the car. Now I did uh, paint the engine bay the other day. Um, it's going to be kind of interesting because this car is pretty rough looking on the outside. Um, now mind you, it hasn't been washed since 82. That'll be a good video. Um, but it's going to have, um, it's got all new suspension, all new brakes, all that stuff. It should, everything should be good. The engine's been rebuilt. Uh, differential's been resealed. Transmission's been resealed. New exhaust, new, all, new front suspension, new interior for it, uh, which I'll cover in another video. The headliner, uh, the my upholster guy is coming I think in the next few days to uh, do the headliner um, and we'll probably set the carpet in at the same time so that'll be good it's gonna come together very quickly but it'll be interesting because I'm gonna leave this all kind of crappy looking just so I'm gonna clean it and the dash is gonna be kind of crappy looking but I'll clean it but then all the little trim bits that go for the headliner and stuff I'm, they're, they've all been powder coated they're at the powder coaters now the headliner will all be new and the interior will all be new and there's a lot of mix of sort of original-ish, I hate to use the word patina, um, looking sort of thing and then also uh, brand new stuff. So it should be a really good driving car, um, 95 horsepower with uh, 110 heads, it's 30 over. Uh, so that should be a good working smooth engine. It's 327 gear, power light transmission. Uh, it should be a good car to go to the Corvair conventions and stuff like that with. Um, not too pretty, so I can leave it outside at the hotel and not worry about it. But I've got all new weather strips and everything. It should be a really good car to drive. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of wiring to do because I have a new engine bay harness. And I have to uh, configure it for my internally regulated alternator. I do that in all my Corvair stuff. Um, the only thing I have left to do, I think, before I put this JMS engine in, is I need to pull the heater fan out, uh, the blower, drop the uh, the mouse houseness out of it, and and then do a, a quick test on it to make sure it works. It's a little bit of a pain to get at when the powertrain's in. It's accessible, but it's more accessible right now. So I'll probably do that first, and then it's time to uh, maybe trim up that perimeter seal and look at installing this engine.
Okay, it looks impressive that it's in here, but it, that was really only three bolts. The real work starts at this point. Uh, I've got to flip that perimeter seal up and then put the retainer on, put the retainers all, all the way around both sides uh, and the back. Put in the cotter pins for the uh, castellated nuts for the engine mounts. Uh, dipsticks, it's a 64, so it has a uh, dipstick for the trans and a dipstick for the diff. 64s are my favorite for a lot of reasons, and that's one of them. Um, 65s have that too, but uh, I do like a 64. Um, you can tell I got some work to do here. Put the axles in. I have to put the transverse leaf spring in, um, hook up this heater hose, hook up the speedometer cable, power glide cable, throttle, um, everything. A lot of stuff yet. Exhaust, the perimeter seal, as I mentioned. Um, so it's literally just kind of hanging in there right now. And uh, lots more to go. So that looks impressive, and it's off my table for the first time in a long time. But uh, this is where the work begins, in my opinion. Um, fortunately, it's not a big mystery of, hey, let me put this engine in. And maybe it'll run, maybe, it'll, maybe it won't, because I've already had it running, and I've already set the valves, and I already have it kind of dialed in, and the carbs, and the timing, and the best I can anyways. Um, so it should be pretty good in that respect. Uh, so I feel confident being able to just go ahead and assemble the rest of the stuff, uh, knowing that I've had it running. And uh, running it on the table or on the stand is a, it's a good idea. At least then you know what you're into. So gotta do all that, gotta do some wiring. Um, she's not gonna be running and driving today by any means. I still have to put sway bar in the front. Uh, I blew out the uh, fuel line uh, with compressed air, but nothing really came out the other side. So I'm not sure, I might take the one from the wagon because it's, um, it's in good shape. Uh, if you noticed, I took the uh, the fan that I tried from this car, it didn't work. It's a good thing I pulled it and tested it. Um, I took the fan from the wagon and tested it, and it worked fine. It had a different connector on it, so I had to use a butt splice and, and uh, another butt splice, uh, current connects. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, getting there, getting there, getting there. Maybe, uh, maybe it'll be on the road before the end of the month. Who knows? I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. Hey folks, good morning. Uh, it's a uh, couple days. Uh, I've been jamming on this car pretty good. It's uh, bright and squirrely, you know, like 5 a.m. maybe before work. Uh, I just want to show you guys where I'm at uh, because the car is gonna look different the next couple of days and that'll start a new video. So I'm gonna end this one with uh, this. So. The, uh, as you saw in my last little clip, engine's in, um, but now all the wiring is done. Uh, I have run it, it does run. Um, I put on, I made some ground cable, made a starter cable, all entirely way too big, but I'd rather be big than too small. Um, I think the stock one is uh, number four and this is number one, so that's quite a bit uh, bigger. Um, junction block for the internally regulated alternator. That's done. I haven't mounted my ignition box yet, but I gotta do that. Uh, I can remove the old regulator because don't need it. Um, I've been soaking the sockets for the reverse lights, trying to get them to work. So there's power there, but there's no lights. Um, I do have power on the taillights and headlights. If any of you follow me on Facebook or uh, Instagram, probably saw that. Because now I've got the LED ones in there. So they work. That's the uh, brake light, because right now there's no brakes. So the pedal just falls to the floor, so the brakes are on. So anyways, uh, so that's good. Uh, I have three out of four signal lights. I was struggling there yesterday. I do have to make a grommet for where that wire and that uh, cable goes through. Um, Struggling a bit yesterday with the lighting situation, but it's come along. I have to install this transverse leaf spring 
Uh, I'm going to scrape it off, clean it up, and then I get new bushings and everything for it. And that's got to go in. Um, eventually, it's going to get a wash, which will be cool. It does go into gear, which is kind of nice. Um, I installed a Racer Zinc modern fuse panel. Um, I still have a couple things to do in here, but uh, the guy is coming to do the headliner today uh, while I'm working. So that'd be good. Um, so that's going to change the game quite a bit. Um, it's also, uh, so the only thing left for brakes is there's a couple of hard lines. That my flare tool is not very good and uh, I'm not very good at it. So I'm going to uh, trailer it to my friend Greg's shop because it has to go there for safety anyways. And uh, he's going to go through him or one of his gentlemen that work with him. We're going to go through the car and check it all for safety and such and uh, give it an alignment, front end alignment, uh, and finish up the hard brake lines uh, for me. So that'll be good. And then I have to, uh, more putting stuff together when I come, when it comes back. It doesn't need an interior for safety, which is interesting, but it doesn't, so. Yeah, so maybe sometime I'll be able to put it outside and give it a bath, that'd be good. And then I'll have to go over later and try and bring this paint back to life a little bit. Lose this these primer touch-ups and uh, do some actual color match touch-ups the best I can with this old single stage paint. Uh, it's not original paint, it's been painted before. Um, I thought that it might be original, but um, it is definitely the original color but it's been painted uh, probably quite a long time ago because it was in a sea can uh, from 1982 until last year. So it really hasn't been washed. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more updates on this car. Um, it's coming together quickly. I'm looking forward to uh, getting it uh, happening and uh, getting it out of the shop side so I can clean the shop because the shop is a disaster. And I haven't really had a chance to sort it out since we built the place. So when we built the shop in 2019, really I had uh, uh, Mike Downey's car come in and then uh, it was just non-stop cars ever since. And, and you guys have seen that because it's all on the channel. So uh, yeah, I will uh, carry on and I'll update you as I go. Thanks for watching this video and uh, check out my other videos on this car and on other cars. Um, lots of good stuff to come. I've got big plans for the winter for the 57 Chev truck and work on my 55 uh, four door to two door to whatever the hell I plan for it to be conversion. If you care to, please subscribe so you can see, uh, get notifications when my videos come up. And thanks very much. Appreciate it.